my creative existence at least, my workflow is founded on chaos. Uh, I'm not, it's something, I, I don't know, I, I think when I was younger I was kind of proud of that because it always just seemed like, you know, I always felt like I was a Tasmanian devil like busting through the door, um, you know, without any real game plan in mind and, you know, at the end of the day, I think the band would always walk out of a rehearsal or a recording studio with something that we were proud of that, you know, maybe wasn't uh, entirely clear to us as we were entering that studio. Um, and this record was no different. The year leading up to going to the studio, we just spent so much time in John's basement, which is funny because it seemed like when we got up to Tarbox, we had to make so many like game time decisions. But we spent so much time in the year leading up gathering song ideas and like trying to work on like part development and stuff like that. And then we were touring too. It took a while for us to get to a point where we were writing Golden Grey, you know, formally. But it also was long because we wanted to tour. Touring is the best practice for writing. You learn the most about your fellow musicians on stage when you can't stop and talk about things. Sometimes we're touring in the middle of like actual recording sessions for, for the record, so every time we come back from a tour we'd have like seemingly a greater skill set. The process we did with Purple was like very meticulous. You know, we had notes on what all, every day the schedule was going to be in the studio, what we were going to record, and then we could worry about things later on. But for this one, first session we had a decent idea what we were going to do. You know, five songs that were like pretty close to done. Everybody had knew what their job was to get what we needed to get done in those two weeks. Before session one, we had written a lot of music and We'd submitted all these demos, and Dave and I, you know, Dave and the band have a great relationship, so he's familiar with like a lot of music. But as most producers that I've worked with will tell you, like just because you have music written doesn't mean you have a song. So I think he, you know, initially in, in session one, he's just trying to get a sense of where we are as players, what is the chemistry of the band with the lineup change with Gina in the band, what is our attitude like, how do we, you know, how are we laying in. And with the songs that had some, you know, with the songs that had choruses and, and verses and stuff like that, how do they come across? We had given ourselves time to kind of split up in teams like we do with Purple, where I, you know, I kind of take over his B room, and that's just kind of like where vocals and a lot of guitar stuff and a lot of songs get worked through to, or where a lot of music gets worked through to, it feels like a song, but then in the main room, you know, Seb and Nick and whomever could be recording the stuff we knew we were going to record. So a lot of times there's just a fuck ton of work happening simultaneously. And we started with the stuff we knew and then we worked more and more towards the stuff that we, we weren't familiar with. The first session was um, Tourniquet. I think that was like the first one sort of done. And I remember doing Borderlines in the first session. Pretty sure we did Cold Blooded Angels and Seasons. And then we had a, about a month in between the two sessions. And in that month, we were supposed to write another five songs. We had, we had five, 
I don't know what, what you would call them, starts. They weren't, you know, finished ideas, they were riffs. In those four weeks, we didn't finish writing the five songs. John spent a lot of time reworking stuff on the previous five songs. And then Nick and I came down a couple of days before the second session and we just, we all came down here and just kind of like tried to piece together the best ideas that we had to use as, you know, seeds for songs. And then when we went to, the stu when we went to uh, Tarbox, we kind of had to write the songs in the studio using riffs we already had or progressions we already had or beats we already had, but they weren't songs. Broken Halo was, um, I don't know, is that maybe the most normal song on the record? I don't know. There's like a, the, the bridge section of that song, when we, record, when we were recording the song, it was, the, you know, Seb really hadn't worked out what he wanted to do with drums, so Dave said, just play a drum solo, like whenever you want in that song. So that's what he did. And then in the middle of the song, we we were playing and nobody knew what we were supposed to do, so we were make, we'd make up the bridge every time, like with no context whatsoever. We didn't know what, we didn't care what key it was. We just got to that point, and I think the original idea was that we would ins we were going to insert another song right there for like 45 seconds, and then boom, it'd be it'd be the last chorus. But instead, we hit we did this one improv that didn't make any sense to me. I don't think it really sounded that good, but everybody liked something about it, so. We ditched the guitars, and there was just a bass line. And if you listen to it, there's no drums, there's no rhythm. There's just a bass note that happens after 15 seconds. And we kind of wrote a guitar solo that that pre uh, what is the word for it that anticipated that bass note, and then every bass note after it, without really having much rhythm or idea or context. So that one worked out. We got super lucky there. Broken Halo is, yeah, it's a fill party. <laughs> Broken Halo was kind of interesting because it started uh, from this just like simple acoustic song that I'd shown John and it was something we were working on. It was like right before, it might have been like the night before we left to go into the second session that John and I were like, oh yeah, why don't we like revisit this <laughs> like acoustic song and it had a melody and like words and everything, you know, it was like a kind of normal song and we kind of took the vocal melody and we're like using it more uh, like as a solo and just like harmonizing with each other and we're like we should definitely you know do this on, on the record and uh, when we got up there it was Nick and Seb hadn't really heard it or maybe they heard it like the night before I don't remember if John and I emailed them like what we were working on and uh, yeah Seb was like well I don't really know exactly like what the song is asking for but he's just like went for it it's just like i'm just gonna like shred through this song and he just like fucking killed it just like <laughs> shredded the entire song it's awesome it's like the energy was super high for that one but it wasn't until the third session that we kind of took the initial acoustic version of that song that we had turned into like a more hyped up rock song and revisited like the acoustic one and gave it like the piano treatment and the more sad like ballady kind of thing. But those those two songs, uh, I'd, I'd do anything and uh, Broken Halo were kind of the inception from this one like just like simple, you know, st straightforward song. <laughs> kind of got broken up into two two different things. Broken Halo, yeah, that's a uh, another second session song second session workout of like four days of figuring out how the hell this thing was going to come together you know we all liked all these parts and that was one where we were just like seb more fills more fills keep doing fills so it's based around seb doing fills essentially <laughs>